Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to 10 plants that acclimate quickly. A quick thing before we start, this video is based solely on my experience with these plants. Again, if you do not know, I own the rare plant shop and here, if I have a certain type of plant, I might have 20 to 30 of that given type of plant. I import them often. This means I can get a great sense of what works and what doesn't work, what ships well, what doesn't ship well, what acclimates well, what doesn't, what propagates well, what doesn't. And don't you worry because all of those videos are coming up on this channel. I'm going to make a series of top 10s I do believe that should be in a playlist down below. I'm going to make all of these videos part of my top 10 series. So I thought I would start today with plants that acclimate quickly. Now then, there's something I need to tell you about plants that acclimate quickly because just because a plant acclimates quickly after shipping does not mean to say that it also ships well. There might be some plants that I have to show you that do not ship well, for example. Similarly, when I do the video on plants that ship well, they might acclimate really poorly. So I want you to understand that there is actually a really important distinction there between acclimation and shipping. They are very different. These plants aren't in any particular order. I'm just gonna grab them as I go. I think I'm gonna grab them from smaller working up to largest because I think that's probably easier. So let me go and grab the first plant. The first plant I really wanna to talk to you about is my favorite heart-leafed philodendron probably of all time. I'm not really sure I can find one that I prefer more than this plant, but this this plant is such a good plant. It's generally easy care. It does actually ship well, but it also acclimates beautifully. If you get one in, in bad shape, you just give it a little bit of love. It's going to come back strong. And the first plant I have to show you is the beautiful Philodendron Gloriosum. You might actually see some of them on the wall behind me. There is a leaf there where I'm pointing there, there's a brand new leaf come in. There are some others, but I think they're further up on my wall. Um, this isn't a green screen, by the way. I've had people say that they think it's a green screen. It's not. It's real. It's a real background. <laughs> so now we've got that out of the way. This is Philodendron Gloriosum, and it's honestly, can you tell why I like it so much? It's just spot on. This isn't actually an acclimation from an import. This is one of my own propagations, but to be honest, some of the same rules apply. So when I cut these, I really have to give them very little care when I plant them into say Lekka or anything like that. I just shove them in and they will probably root and take up very well. The reason they acclimate so well, I believe, is just because of how easy it is to grow roots on them. So if you get a philodendron in and it is a stump, it's probably going to rehabilitate quite quickly providing of course you give it what it needs but this is just one of my top plants and honestly you're probably going to see it in tons of videos whether it be these top 10 videos or favorite plant videos or easy plant videos this is your boy honestly it is i say that a lot on this channel i'll show you up a little bit closer in front of my face i mean if you didn't like philodendron gloriosum before surely surely you do now look at that Oh my God, that is a thumbnail right there. What a beautiful plant. What a beautiful plant. So easy to care for, grows really well, acclimates beautifully. Whenever I bring in Gloriosum, which admittedly isn't as often nowadays as what it used to be because I have so many mother plants, it scares me. I've probably got two, 300 mother plants, no problem. But I do still bring them in from time to time. And when I do, honestly, I don't really lose any I just don't lose any. It's rare that I lose one. And if I do, it's probably because it's just, it was particularly weak or something like that. I just rarely lose them. I rarely lose them when I propagate them as well. They are a fantastic plant. If you've ever considered taking the plunger on one of these, honestly, they are brilliant. They're absolutely stunning. Completely recommend. This is Philodendron Gloriosum. The next plant I have to share with you, I don't really think I've talked about that often on my channel, but honestly, when I brought these guys in last year, they were noticeably easy. Like they just didn't really change from the day that they arrived in my shop to literally three weeks later, there was no change. Very, very nice, tough, easy plants. This plant here, is Philodendron bipenifolium aurea, also known as Philodendron golden violin, I think that is the name. If it is a different name, I will have put the correct name up on the screen. But this bad boy, admittedly, this isn't showing how awesome it is. So this is quite juvenile, to be honest. This might give you a slight idea here of the leaf shape. I can't see which way I'm turning this like this. It's kind of like a, almost like an elephant's face 
shape, I suppose. It's not a great analogy, but the leaves are a slightly different shape from this. Anyway, this is because it's juvenile. But the cool thing about this plant is it's very similar to a philodendron for the ghost. When the leaves come in, they emerge a lemon yellow color, and then over time they fade to green, which is why you're actually seeing this. This is fading down already. That was yellow, and it's going to fade further down to that which will fade down to that, which will fade down to green. So the yellow is temporary, but it's a really pretty plant. And honestly, these are so strong. This is just one of them. I don't have many of these, admittedly. I don't know if many people even care about these. I don't hear them mentioned. In terms of like rare plants, air quotes, this is definitely on the cheaper end. I think you can find these for about 50 English pounds, maybe a little bit lower. It really depends. Or at least that's what it was when I last checked last year. So they're quite affordable, but my goodness, they acclimate so well. Just There is just zero change from bringing in the plant to a few weeks later, they look exactly the same. So they can't really not get my vote. They're absolutely amazing. They're really, really tough. This is Philodendron Bipenifolium aurea, also known as Philodendron golden violin. Okay, the next plant I have to show you, I have so many good things to say about. I can't shut up about it. This is very similar to the Philodendron Gloriosum I showed you, the first plant in our list, because this plant I have here is the same thing. It's so tough and it is kind of an all-rounder, so it does acclimate well. It also imports well. It propagates well. This is an all-rounder, so if I do more of these videos, you are going to see this probably pop up. It is unbelievable. This plant isn't really the one plant. It just stands for a certain type of plant, but I want to show you this one here just because it's the one I picked up today. I saw it over there in a tray and I thought, hmm, that's quite nice. So this here is the most amazing Syngonium Pink Splash. I will try and tip it up to the camera like that so you can see. Can you see that there? Look at that. How beautiful is that? So this is essentially a pink variegated Syngonium. I'll try and pull some of the leaves forward so you can actually see on camera. Look how stunning this plant is, honestly. I'm lucky because this plant here has growth that has just come out with me because, why do I say that? So this plant does acclimate well. Now they do ship well, but you can get yellowing on the lower leaves or you can get leaves that get quite stressed. So this plant here has grown with me and all of the leaves are just the most stunning color. Like you can tell every single leaf on here is one of mine. It's absolutely beautiful. There's another one there. There's another one there. Oh my goodness, how gorgeous is that? That is just stunning. They do acclimate well, but they can drop a couple of leaves in shipping. So this one looks great, but they can look not as good. But honestly, these can take nearly anything you throw at them. They really can. They can tolerate overwatering pretty well. They can damn near live in marshy water. If I'm totally honest with you, I've done it. They can take underwatering like no tomorrow as well. They're just tough. So for, in terms of a plant acclimating, these are fantastic. They also grow really quickly. Like I'm having no problem propagating these and duplicating them. They're a really beautiful plant, really nice as well. If you want a variegated plant that is easy, that's not going to give you too much trouble. And it's a good price as well, because these aren't too expensive. These are definitely, I think they're high double digits. I know that is kind of expensive, but in terms of like rare plants, this is definitely one of the cheaper ones. I'll tip it once more because honestly, this really is one of my favorites. Can you tell? There. Oh my God. Oh my God, that is a beautiful, beautiful plant. Now then, the rule here does apply to most types of Syngonium, not all types of Syngonium, but any Syngonium that is from the Potophyllum variety or family, shall we say, it kind of applies to that. So it doesn't have to be a pink splash that I'm holding up. It could be a Syngonium albo. It could be a Syngonium aurea. It could be a Syngonium mojito. It could be anything in that arena. They all perform in exactly the same way these ones do, but Honestly, how could I not? How could I not hold that up on camera today? That is just mind-blowingly beautiful. So this is Syngonium Pink Splash, but it doesn't just have to be Pink Splash. The next plant I have to show you is an Anthurium. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. Anthurium are not the easiest for a lot of people anyway. Some people just have an affinity with them, but for a lot of people, Anthurium generally are pretty shit to acclimate. Not this guy, I guarantee you. So this here is Anthurium vicii. He's just a one leafer, but he's so pretty. I've had this guy about 
I think about a month now, I would say. He's doing really well. He came in more or less like this. So I haven't had new growth out of him, but that's not necessarily what acclimation means. It's just growing roots and it's doing well. So this one hasn't even gone nasty from shipping. You can see some shipping damage on him. I'm not gonna deny that, but generally speaking, Exactly the same, exactly the same. He's had the same treatment as all my philodendron get, and he's beautiful. And Therium Vichii, what a pretty guy. I will mention this a lot in later videos, no doubt, but I think the reason that this guy is tougher and he acclimates more quickly is because he's not velvet. He has like a glossy, well, it's not really glossy, but you know what I mean? He's got like a rubbery appearance texture to him. And I think that's what sets him apart from all the velvet types. I think that the velvet types are much more difficult to acclimate, whereas these guys, pretty easy. So if you've been considering a Vichii, even though they are a much higher cost on occasion because it's a King Anthurium, you probably are taking less risk because it's going to acclimate pretty well. For what it's worth, they ship well too. So it's another one of my favorites. I do have my own personal one upstairs, but this is just one from my shop and he's really, really pretty. He's due a root check soon to see how he's doing. But last time I checked him, he was doing beautifully. So this here is Anthurium Vichii. The next plant I have to show you is another one of my absolute favorites. I have a giant one in my wall. Can you see it? Yes, you can. It is right around here. This, honestly, such a good plant. This here is Philodendron Plamanii. Right then. One thing, this is a leaf that's emerging. That's why it's so brightly colored. This is an older leaf here, as you can see. This is what they normally look like. Sorry, it's going to focus on me and not the plant. And this here is a brand new leaf like that. Beautiful, beautiful plant. Now then, I don't know why people don't rave about these a lot more. I don't personally get it. I think it's got absolutely everything. The leaves have so much dimension to them. They have a lot of contrast and the backs of them look great as well. They're just an all round beautiful plant. As I mentioned just before there, I do have a massive one back here. I don't know if you can see him. There he is, if I give him a wiggle. He's just been recently planted back into the wall. But honestly, these plants acclimate so well. This is another plant that when I bring them in, they don't die. They just don't die. Because sometimes I bring stuff in and it will. And it's 50-50 chance whether it you know lives or dies. This is not one of them. This is fantastic. It is a crawler similar to the Philodendron Gloriosum. That could be another reason why it acclimates well. It roots really well as well. I don't typically get failed propagations on these. They don't propagate as well as other crawlers, I will say that. I don't know if that's to do with the petiole being super thin and water consumption and stuff like that. So they can be a bit iffy on propagation, but acclimation when you bring them in. They might go a bit floppy, but honestly, just leave them in water for a bit longer and they'll be absolutely fine. They do show a little bit more damage on the leaves than other philodendron as well. It shows more damage than the Gloriosum. And I think that's just because the leaves are much thinner. The leaves on this plant are so much more paper thin, whereas the Gloriosum are a little bit thicker. That obviously contributes to acclimation as well. But honestly, this plant is not to be sniffed at. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I would like some more of these, to be honest. Look at that. It just looks brilliant on camera as well. It's, some plants look good on camera and some don't. This is definitely one that does. Look at that. Ooh! Get the other leaf as well, since it's older. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plant. This is Philodendron Plamanii. Absolutely stunning, well worth it. Doesn't really let me down. The next plant I have to show you looks slightly hilarious, but I think it's just, it's, it's just popping away in the pot. It's, it's grown quite large, actually, I'm really surprised. I only checked on this this morning in order to pull it out for today's video, and I had no idea it had grown this large. So the next plant that I think is very good at acclimating, and there might be one or two people that disagree with me here, but the next plant I have for you is the Aglaonema pictum tricolor. And can I just, literally, the size of this leaf? I know that pictums, obviously, the aglaonema generally can get quite large, but you never see them that size. Look at that. You don't really see them that size. You see them more like this size here. So <laughs> basically, let me just show you what's going on because this looks insane. There are roots all up in here. This is actually in soil. It's been in here a long time. I find that they just like soil a bit more than other things. But this plant has pupped itself, which is awesome. Um, so I have two pups in the same pot like that. Sorry, I know it's not the best thing to be able to tell against this background. It's beautiful, but it's not the easiest thing to show plants against. But yeah, this this new leaf, I mean, what? What? So yes, Aglaonema pictum tricolor. People say that they're very difficult to care for. I don't know if it's just my conditions in here, but I'm finding them quite 
easy. They're a little bit finicky with light. I think they need less than what we think they do. To be honest, it's, it's definitely a plant that you can bring the light right down. But generally, they're okay. They like their feed as well. But in terms of acclimation, I bring them in. They don't suffer damage in the same way that a lot of other plants do when they're treated by the grower before they're sent, when they're dipped in harsh chemicals. These plants don't really suffer from that as much. The roots really like hold their own. I think that's a good reason why they acclimate well, because the roots suffer less damage. They don't root unbelievably easy. I wouldn't say they're the fastest, but they do hold their own and they hold quite strong. That could just be down to the really woody stem. Again, it really depends from plant to plant what makes them good at acclimating. But honestly, look at this guy. It looks so good, doesn't it? I may have to keep this guy. This guy is awesome. There you have it. This is Aglaonema pictum tricolor, sometimes known as the camouflage plant, but it is Aglaonema pictum tricolor. Absolutely beautiful, obviously, because it looks like camel, like real camel. What more could you want? It is velvety as well, by the way. It's got a really beautiful texture that is not going to come off on camera, but oh my God. We're getting a little bit larger with the plants now, but this next plant, again, I've brought it in. I've had no losses. It roots like wildfire, this one. This one and another plant I have on this list that I'm going to show you after this one, they're kind of similar in the way that they root, in the way that they grow, and the speed that they grow. This one is not as fast as the next one, but it's still a solid plant. Trust me, this is absolutely solid. So this here is the beautiful Philodendron Mexicanum. Now I'll try and tilt it this way so you can actually get a good sense of what's going on. It's not the easiest thing to show you when these plants are all massive. I'll move back slightly. So the plant has a shape like this on the leaves. If I put it in front of my body, you can really see the shape there. That's how they look. But also they have this beautiful blush that comes in on new leaves. Look, right up here on the back. Look at that. Is that not just sexy to you? Look at that. Oh my goodness me, that is just the most beautiful thing in the world. Now, unfortunately, at least for me in my conditions, the red backing is not permanent, so it will fade. If you look here, this is much less of a blush than the newer one. Still beautiful though, and it's still really nice to have. Now then, you may notice, you may notice, these aerial roots here in the bottom of the pot. Can you see that? That is insanity. Those roots have grown mainly with me. Certainly the last two nodes have definitely been with me. They just root like nothing else. Now I had trouble picking this out because this was actually rooted into a lot of my others that were next to it in Lekka. So that tells me that they root really fast. I can't really pull this out that much, but you can see there that that aerial root was rooting into another pot. It takes no time at all for these to just stabilize. There was no real loss when I brought them in. A few of them, I think, had lost maybe a leaf on the bottom or something like that from shipping, but generally they were fine. I don't even think they were really that dehydrated when I brought them in. It was a long time ago. I think I brought these in in like February of this year. These have been with me a long time. You can probably tell by the lack of transit damage on the leaves. They've been with me a while, but they're just so good to acclimate. They're probably ready to leave me now and, and go to a new home, but I need to let you know how good these are acclimating. Zero issues. They pretty much stay how they came in. Completely and utterly recommend this one. Also, it looks like it's going to be an absolutely fantastic climber because the aerial roots travel for days. So this here is Philodendron Mexicanum, and it is absolutely stunning. So this next plant is like the last plant on steroids. And I'm not even kidding. This is out of control. I would honestly describe this one as out of control. I'm going to waste no time. This here is, oh my goodness, this here is Philodendron Paraiso Verde. Now let's just take you on a tour of this plant before I tell you why it is awesome. Although the big indicator is here. So if I show this up to the camera, you'll see the insane amount of roots there are. It's not just those though. It's not just those. Those are aerials that have decided that they're going to become just full on roots. But also, if I tilt it this way, you can see here there is an aerial root that's just decided to grow around the pot and it's just circling around repeatedly. How awesome is that? So these plants pretty much don't take any damage. Again, I think they might drop a leaf or so at most. You won't lose it. You really won't. I would honestly describe them as ferocious. I don't often use that term with plants, but I would with these. They're absolutely insane. So apart from this ridiculousness, because obviously this was rooting into other things, the cool thing about this plant is that they kind of resemble a bilitai, but not. They have these really cool... I had a name for it a while ago and I can't remember what it was, but it's like a minty, mottled kind of spray paint effect to the leaves where you get lighter colors and then darker colors. That is part of the plant, by the way. It can disappear depending on light conditions, but it can come back. It's not 
once you get this they are green forever it really is dependent on light conditions like that one there has gone completely green that almost looks like a billet type which is a shame i think if i'm correct they like lower light to keep the pattern not higher light i will do some experiments on that and check i have way more of these they are taken over the shop i actually can't get rid of these quick enough because they're so fast they really are just growing everywhere. Case in point, I think I have a couple on the wall. I don't know if you can see. If I move back here, this guy right here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you kind of can. That is a Pareso Verde. Uh, I actually have one up here. Can you see that one? Yes. Uh, I have a few on there, but it's basically this guy. And this is why I put it on the wall, because they are absolutely insane. There's been zero issues with that one going on the wall in terms of acclimation. They are just hardcore. They're absolutely hardcore, ferocious, tough plants. Philodendron Pareso Verde. Okay, this next plant I have to share with you is another absolutely all-rounder for me. It ships well, it acclimates well, it doesn't necessarily propagate well, but it's a very easy care plant. This is one of my favorites, and this is great if you just want something completely different in your plant collection. I'll have to hold him very carefully because he doesn't have an outer pot. This here is Anthurium vitari folium. Now then, what's cool about this one? Well, the leaves, it's so difficult to describe them. I normally describe them as feeling like actual belts because a lot of the time, these leaves feel like genuine leather. It's so weird. I know that sounds insane if you've never felt the plant, but I think people that own the plant know what I'm talking about. You get the most beautiful, beautiful leaves on these things. Honestly, just stunning long belts. And the more the plant grows, the longer these belts will be and they will look unbelievable. They're an absolutely fantastic plant. Bringing these in, again, nothing happened. Didn't even drop a leaf. The roots were absolutely insane. The roots are very similar to the roots of Anthurium clarinervium. If you have any experience with that plant, this plant I like to think is kind of the hanging version of it. It's got these roots that are so tuberous, they can dehydrate and then hydrate again without them basically becoming desiccated or rotting or anything like that. They're so tough. Honestly, they are so tough. They're one of the toughest anthuriums there are and they just grow fantastic. And if you have less space and you want a hanging plant that's just cool as hell, this is your boy. Look at it. It's an absolutely fantastic plant. It is what is known in the trade as a long boy. That's how we professionally refer to them. This one isn't so long though. This one could be better, I think. But he is just a baby because this here, you can't really tell, but this is a new leaf coming out here. He's just a small boy. You know, he's a long boy, but a small boy. Really, really pretty. One of my favorite plants, acclimates so well. It's kind of like what acclimation? It's just so easy. So this here is Anthurium vitari folium. The last plant I have to share with you today, it's the biggest one, it's the most gangly, it's the most unruly, but it's fantastic. And I had zero leaf drop on acclimation. It's just been perfect. It's been absolutely wonderful. The only thing I'll say that it hasn't liked from me personally is the amount of light I've given it. I do think that in the conditions that I have this plant currently, it's getting a bit too much light and it needs a bit less. So for that reason, I've left one of these leaves on. It's got some acclimation damage, but it's due to the light, I think, more than anything. So without further ado, one of my favorites. Love this plant at the minute, absolutely obsessed. This here is Philodendron Dean McDowell, and it's absolutely stunning. I do have it in and out of pot, but it's all icky. So this here is a new leaf like this coming in. It's very similar to a Gloriosum, and you're probably thinking, hmm, it kind of is, except it's a bit glossier. If you look at that, a bit less veining. That's because it's a hybrid between Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Pastazanum. So if you're seeing essence of Gloriosum, that is actually why. Look at this dude here, seriously. Can you see that in the pot? I know that's not the easiest thing to show you, but look at him go. It's just ridiculous in there. So yeah, as I say, I didn't have any leaf drop. Now then, the two leaves on the bottom are this one here, that small round boy, and if I pull him down, this one here. Now this one's taken a beating because if I stand back a little bit, I've been using this leaf kind of above the others to shade it because, as I mentioned before, I think it's had too much light. The new growth is actually all right. This is obviously the newest boy right here. This guy, absolutely beautiful. He's not even hardened off yet. He's kind of pink on the back still. Don't know if you can see that. Let me turn him around. Yeah, you can kind of get a, an idea that he's pink. And the leaf before that is this boy here. I mean, tell me, tell me that isn't absolutely beautiful. It just, honestly, this plant gives me the kind of smile that you can hear. Honestly, I just, I'm obsessed with this. But yeah, when I brought them in, I didn't bring that many in because these are actually very expensive, but I brought them in, no problems. 
literally no problems. I find this generally with crawling plants. Now that could be my conditions. It just could be, but particularly here, I don't seem to have many issues with crawlers, and this is certainly one of them. But if you want to think of it this way, Gloriosum is very great on acclimation. It's awesome. It was the first plant that we talked about. So given that, to see a plant with a hybrid, you know, with some Gloriosum in it, it doesn't really surprise anybody that it's also very good. It is pricey at the minute. I think it's more pricey than Gloriosum just because they're, they're not as known. I think they were a couple of years ago, but they're just kind of not now. Beautiful plant though and I do recommend. They just don't have issues acclimating. There you have it. The last plant on my list that is absolutely excellent in terms of acclimation. This is Philodendron Dean McDowell, a hybrid between Philodendron Pastazanum and Philodendron Gloriosum. And that concludes my top 10 plants that are absolutely excellent to acclimate. Again, not all of these plants ship the best. I wouldn't put them in the best category. That is a separate video. So if and when I produce that video, you may see some things that repeat, some things that seem contradictory. And honestly, some plants ship great and then decline on arrival. Some plants ship great and acclimate great. Some plants ship terribly and acclimate terribly. It really does depend on the type of plant and of course the conditions you have at home. So if you're finding slightly different things to me, that could be because you have different conditions. My conditions here are around about 28 degrees Celsius. It's very hot in here right now. I don't know how I'm holding this down in this top and we're at around about 80% humidity. It does kind of fluctuate between 70 and 80, some days even 85, it really depends. So we are very hot here and we are very humid. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, then please leave a like. It really helps me out with all that algorithm stuff that no one really understands. If you'd like to see any more of my content, even a tour of this place, if you haven't seen what I've got going on, then please feel free to subscribe. You can look at my channel and everything is laid out for you in playlists. Thanks very much for watching guys. I love you all and I will see you next week. Bye!